and the Blood Legion were taught the meaning of the word duty. We are relentless. Today, the soldiers of the Black Citadel assault the ghosts that plague this land. I've been assigned to reinforce the Bulwark. Let the Ash Legion strike from the shadows. Let the Iron Legion build its machines of war. I will not stop fighting until the only thing left standing on the field of battle is me. This is my story. Welcome back. Today we are on a char. We are resuming the adventure on Terex Ripjaw. So, a lot of you may be wondering why we've just made a new character fairly abruptly in the middle of uh, what was happening on our human. That might even put some of you guys off, but let me tell you, this is where things get really interesting. By the way, we can do slash talk as well to make it look like I'm actually talking here. We, get, we might do this in the episodes if it's not too weird, alright? This is where things get really interesting. I've alluded a little bit to this already in the series, but one thing you guys need to understand about Guild Wars 2, the core story is that it's a jigsaw puzzle. It's a huge, sprawling, almost you might call mess that's split across so many different character arcs and decisions that to get a truly comprehensive, cohesive perspective of the story they're trying to tell, you kind of have to pour through lots of different individual story journals and step to figure out exactly what's going on. And that's boring, and that sucks, and that's lame, and it's not very accessible to new people. So the reason, one of the big reasons why I want to do this series for you all, is so that I can decipher it all. I can present just the most important pieces in the best order for you all, so that we really see the best stuff. And that means that every now and then, we're going to have to swap across multiple different perspectives in the timeline. We have to go back in time to chapter one to find out what was happening at the Black Citadel with the Char, while our human on the other side of the world is participating in stuff to do with Crichton politics. What was going on here is also important. What's going off a million miles away as well at the Tarnish Coast and beyond is also important. And so that means playing with the narrative a little bit, messing around a bit. Now again, it's not really viable for me to show you everything, and there's a lot of dud stories, but hopefully I can give you the best order of things. So that's gonna mean some interesting interesting swaps and splits around. That's going to mean we meet various characters you might not expect. It's also going to mean, quite probably, not necessarily all of our characters you're seeing will survive to the end, to the climactic battle with the Elder Dragon. And just how we get from A to B is going to be, hopefully, something really quite curious to look at. It's actually taken a lot of planning for me to figure out exactly what order I want to do things in. So, that means for now, we have to see another perspective here. We're going to check out the Char, and we're going to do it here on Tyrix. Welcome to Ascalon. Ascalon was where the entire franchise began, really. Back then, it was green fields and lush landscapes, but the invasion of the Char never ceased on the 250-year gap between the two games, and this is what it's like now. The Iron Legion have come in, they've polluted, they've brought industry, and now it's metal and iron and just a completely different area. Off in the background over there, you might still see the ruins of some of the human cities, but uh, generally speaking, we're in for a very different place here on our Blood Legion Warrior. So yeah, I did a, a total makeover kit. This is how we look now. What do you guys think? These are new horns, I think. New face, new everything. And uh, as we progress through the story and we get new armor, we're going to become a total badass. So here you'll notice we have a sword equipped. Elementalists can't equip sword for a long time. Uh, not until they elite specialize at endgame. We get it right off the bat. And we get totally different mechanics, totally different profession stuff to learn. And it should be pretty good. God, she sounds so quiet. Dialogue volume is maxed out, so I guess it's just that we're in the middle of a loud war zone here. So much as the humans started uh, in a, a big battle for their lives at the village of Shamor, it looks like the Char are under threat from a different threat domestically too. So let's speak to this uh, Legionnaire Tozier Dome Splitter. She says, just in time, soldier. The ghost armies have been bashing at that gate for weeks. They've finally broken through. Fight your way to the front and report to Centurion Christ Knife for orders. For uh, So, for the legions, we cry as we charge forward. We've got to fight our way ahead. So, yes, the uh, main threat to the char right now, one of the big threats, they actually have a great many, which is kind of fair because they're so powerful and dangerous. They have a great many things threatening them. This is your lucky day. You get to pay attention to me. 
these are the ghosts of the old humans that used to live here, once again risen in unending, unceasing battle by their last king, King Adelburn, who basically sacrificed his last populations in a giant explosion, a ghost explosion called the Faux Fire. Me up so I can die fighting. And turned his people into unending, uh, ever vigilant ghost warriors that the Char can't get rid of. I don't like this. The war is scattered. So you remember that uh, Claw Spell was an option we chose um, earlier on at character creation. How's it going, dude? Tyrix! Still upright and kicking, eh? He says, Hal charged ahead as usual. His impatience is going to get him a knife in the back someday. Not my knife, probably, unless someone steals my knife. So, how's our artillery, artillery holding up, old buddy? He says, ghosts overran us, smashed most of our mortars. A few are still operational, though, if you feel like shelling some of the blue fiends. Trouble everywhere. Watch your back. So he says, watch your back. God, he's got a cool voice. You used to, in early versions of the game, actually be able to use these mortars and you'd shoot them. Uh, that's not necessary anymore. All we got to do is speak to the Centurion here and see what's going on. Hey, what's going on, Gracchus? I need your help, soldier. Tribune Brimstone has ordered me to the crypt. But I'm too torn up to make it. What's so important that the Blood Legion Tribune is there? Ghost of Duke Beriton is far more powerful than we thought. His army just broke through our defenses. Ritlock's about to fight him head on. If he succeeds, it'll be weeks before the Ghost reforms, and we can rebuild our perimeter. On my way. So we just had the term Tribune there. Among the hierarchies of the Char, you got the High Legions we talked about in the previous video. Uh, well, you also get within those legions, like, you know, a, a structure of uh, people who outrank one another. Tribune being the Blood Legion Tribune is an extremely senior position, okay? And uh, the Blood Legion Tribune is a man named Ritlock Brimstone. Who's gone on ahead? He's saying the same thing he said before. So we've got to go meet him uh, to take out a big, bad, dangerous ghost. That name you heard there, Baradin? You might recognize that if you played the original game. Baradin was a character, a human you actually met and spoke to. And he's now just a, a spirit that assaults the Char, ever trying to defend Asklon. Dinky's got a surprise for you. So here's another member of our warband. This is Dinky. We could have chose to be our, you know, our best friend. We didn't in the end. Uh, these ghosts think they can push us around, but I'll kill them twice over. And if they're still not dead, twice over again. Wish I could go. Kill those ghosts. Dead. Dead. <laughs> uh, okay, we'll try and kill them deader. So by the way, our attacks. As a warrior... We get chain attacks. Most classes get these on their autos, okay? So what happens is when we attack this ghost the first time, we use one ability. The second we use a different, and the third we use a different. So we chain and roll our abilities into one another. So it's one slot on the skill bar, but it's actually three abilities. So you sever artery, gash, hamstring. Sever artery, gash, hamstring. Which actually, again, is sort of a reference back to the original game where warriors would have to dedicate three skill slots to this. But in this game, you get it all in one. And they do a slightly different thing each time. So the first time, we bleed them a bit. The second time, what do we do? We bleed, we bleed again, and then we bleed and cripple them. Yeah? So we do lots of flat damage, and we're constantly gashing them and cutting them up and applying damages over, damage over time. I can't believe I just said the word damages there. That's not a word. Uh, so we get to the gate. The gate to the crypts. Stand down. Forget your orders. No one goes into this crypt unless I command it. But we gotta get in, man. What are you doing? Hold it, soldier. Tribune Brimstone's gone into the crypt. Orders are we make sure no ghosts follow him, which means we don't advance until the last one's vapor. Our warband's scattered. I'll go round them up. Oh. Hey, anybody can't keep up gets left behind. Obey my orders, or I'll have you split tip to tail for insubordination. Is that clear, soldier? Crystals, sir. So these guys won't mess around, all right? If uh, we try to disobey them, they will come down on us like a ton of bricks. So we kind of have to toe the line a little bit here. Um, and if we're going to step out of line, we best make sure we're strong enough to contest these people higher up than us. So yeah, we'll stay, we'll defend, we'll uh, take these ghosts out. We can actually explore quite a lot here in the starting area. Most Guild Wars 2 players don't realize this, but there is a lot of exploration you can do. If you look at the map, right, we can go quite far away. And you'll find members of your warband, like, scattered all over the place. Stand down! Forget your orders. No one goes into this crypt unless I command it. Alright, so there he's just repeating dialogue. I think because we had another MMO player here. So this guy is called Tau Rexus. Um, and he's going to defend it with me. Very similar to the garrison you'll remember from the Battle of Shamor. The devs do kind of a similar thing. They're teaching us what dynamic events are and so forth. This is essentially the tutorial instance again. 
And uh, we'll defend the ghost as best we can. Uh, the game is actually doing something quite clever right now. In that there's a big special boss fight going on in the crypt. And by forcing us to defend here, it means we don't sort of interfere with it. Open that gate or I'll be holding your head. Now! Ritlock needs reinforcements. Okay, so Risa comes in. She charges over. She makes sure he opens it. Yeah, well, how do you feel now? What are you doing up here? He says, I don't need your help. Get your worthless tail below. Tribune Brimstone wants you in the crypt. Okay, Mr. Char. Fine. We'll move on in. So, if we were any other race... Best fight in weeks. You go on. I'll be right behind you. So, if we were any other race right now, we might be scared of this. It looks a bit creepy. But with a char, we don't have to fear. We're, we're holding our faces very close to one another right now. Oh, baby. Uh, I was wondering when you were going to join the party. They told us to kill as many ghosts as we can. You go on ahead. These are mine. Gotta love this job. All right, we're moving in. So, the char are running in. Players and NPCs alike will be charging through here. Our heal skill this time, by the way, is called Mending. This is funny because uh, in the original game, you get, used to get a lot of warriors would run a monk as their secondary profession, and they'd use Mending to heal themselves. And that's what Arena Net start you off with as your heal skill in this game, too. It was actually quite strong. If you watched my Let's Play of the original game, you will have seen I played as a warrior with Mending for a long time. It was actually good because I was trying to do a challenge where we soloed the game. So, uh, so yeah, we get into this crypt. It looks pretty scary. There's a big, terrifying-looking statue up there. Take it and stun fast! And we've got some waves of ghosts to defeat here. So we've got Ascalonian archers. Fighters. Rally to me! Cut them down! Stop them flat! Well, we will. We seem to be absolutely destroying them right now. So one thing you can do in this game, by the way, is you can set up your chat log in the bottom left to display damage you deal to people. Or damage we take from people. Filthy animals. You will regret this. Strong. I will not be defeated. I will destroy you all. So here's the ghost of Duke Baradin. As you can see, and we're destroying him. And oh dear. We get another big boss. So they will always, at the start of a new race, give you an ice cool boss. So we get to target the hammer or we get to target him himself. You lost this war long ago and we'll kill you until you get the point. We're absolutely destroying him. Oh my god. But so if you look in the bottom here, you see we get fear enemies. And bury the ashes. Make him remember that day. Ritlock is uh, fighting alongside us down there just as Logan was. Forward legions. Finish him. And he's crying. We're actually destroying him. I haven't even contributed here. Let's get in. Let's try and get in. There we go. I think we've got one attack at the end. Accomplished. You're heroes now, boys and girls. Congratulations. Report back to Smokestead. <sighs> it's such a shame that this is all so easy. I get that it's your tutorial, but my god. Come on, we better get to enjoy the fight. It's very little more than a spectacle, but there you have it. So that's the tutorial for the chart. Looking forward to the real dungeons coming up. The first one is actually here in Ascalon. I heard what you did down in that crypt, soldier. Impressive. Tribune Brimstone was calling the shots. I just did my job. Yeah, we did nothing. Don't sell yourself short. You were part of the team that took down Baradin and stopped the ghost assault. Smokestead is safe now, and you helped make it that way. People are still on edge, though. It'd help if they saw someone like you making the rounds, lending a hand. The quicker we get this place squared away, the sooner the Legions can get back to business. You can help. I'd rather have volunteers, but if I have to issue an order, I will. That won't be necessary, Legionnaire. I hereby volunteer. So you'll notice the similarities there immediately to the structure for the human side of the story. We get a new weapon here. We get a new sword. Uh, it's stronger. We get our level two. We learn a new ability here. It's called Savage Leap. Lunge at your foe and strike them with your sword so we can jump really far here. Very cool ability that can get you to uh, good mobility in combat and get you to places maybe that the devs weren't expecting because you can do cool leaps across gaps and things like we can jump over to this. And if we hit, if we didn't hit the barrier there, we might have been able to get in it. Uh, so yeah, we get out. We uh, are in the world. You know, as a human, when we were the hero of Shamor, the entire arc, they're talking about us being the hero of Shamor and, you know, it's this great profound thing. For the Char, it's almost like just another day. I'd rather kill Flame Legion traitors than dead Ascalonians. 
If you live long enough, you'll get plenty of both. So this sort of old elderly female char saying that. So yeah, another one of the threats to the char is not just the ghosts. There are other things. One of the high legions themselves will be fighting us. That's the Flame Legion. That's the one we couldn't pick. Um, so yeah, they won't go on and on about the fact that we're a hero uh, and we've just got to get out there and we've got to sort of um, help people. The place we defended, by the way, was this area we're in. is sort of known as a village. It's like the village of Smokestead. It's on the borders of an enormous industrial citadel. Which is sort of acts as the capital of the Ch of the Char lands um, here in Ascalon. It's known as the Black Citadel, and it's all industrial and like heavily built up to sort of signify that this is Iron Legion engineering and strength, right? And the Iron Legion seat of power. Anyway, so we get a scout. Let's uh, have a see what's going on in the area. Smokestead lies outside the Black Citadel on land we took back from the humans. It's our base of operations for further expansion into this region. We're pressing east and north, facing resistance from the Flame Legion and an infestation of Ascalonian ghosts. The Legions need every soldier to do his or her part. So here we get, like, a selection. They're going to teach us about waypoints again, so I'll just close that down. Here we get a selection of um, hearts to do, similar to what we had before. To give you some context, okay... This is Ascalon. These are the Ascalonian, like, starting regions. There's a huge mountain chain... On the other side of the mountain chain is Lion's Arch and stuff, and all the way over here, this is where we were as a human before, okay? So we're a very- we're on the other side of a mountain chain known as the Shiver Peaks. Uh, that's where we are now, so we are very, very far away from where all those human stories were taking place. Uh, we can come out and explore. Hey, come talk to me. I think that's all of them. It better be. Put those gates back up, and make sure they don't get knocked down again. Okay, okay. Do I have to do everything around here? Ha! You stop letting those cows escape and we'll talk. So, this is one of the more uh, fun changes to the game uh, since the start. This is actually an entirely new heart quest region activity for us to do that never existed back at the game's original release. When they went through and refined a lot of the early stuff, uh, they did, in some places, add new content, and this is some of it. This never used to exist, but now we can come here and learn about a heart very early. Similar simple tasks for us to do, like uh, breaking spider egg sacs here, killing barn spiders. Um, the char aren't just all about, you know, mechanical industry and steel working and iron working and stuff like that. Uh, but they actually do a lot of ranching, and they do a lot of farming of cows, creating beef and stuff to uh, feed the legions and fuel the war effort. So there is... Uh, there is char farmland and there is sort of agriculture going on it's just a lot more industrial scale and a lot more it's more like slaughterhouses and uh that variety of things rather than people who grow crops and and whatnot obviously the char do but that sort of de-emphasized as far as the game is concerned so we can run through this barn we can kill a bunch of spiders get some basic uh learning about the game done thanks for your help tyrix now i can actually walk through my barn without getting a face full of spider web if you're ever looking for something to do you're welcome at my ranch so unlike when we were a human and I sort of did quite an extensive run around in the open world showing you guys what it's like to level. So how do we get through this gate, by the way? Um, I don't really see much need to do it here, except to just sort of establish what this area of the world looks like. Which, luckily, we'll get a lot of from playing the story anyway. Uh, but I do want to give you um, a little bit of a look around. And that's mainly at these huge ruins off in the distance. Look at how cool this is. So this is the Great Northern Wall. Uh, once upon a time, and if you played the original game, you'll know about this, the Ascalonians, the humans that once lived here, they tried to defend themselves from the Char by building this wall, and it indeed worked for them for many, many, many years. The Char are actually, and the Blood Legion homelands, right, they're all the way up here. This is not actually playable in Guild Wars 2 yet. Perhaps a future update will give this to us. Uh, in fact, one of the recent changes to the game suggests that this might be upcoming soon. But the, we are from all the way up here. And the Char actually a attacked Ascalon from up north. And they came south. The humans had built this wall to defend themselves. But by the time Guild Wars 2 comes, the wall is in disrepair. The Char have long since knocked down various aspects of it. They're still in the process of demolishing it. You can see all these huge chains uh, keeping pieces of it tethered together as they try and pull it down. You can uh, see various parts of it where the uh, Char have uh, graffitied on it and built their machines into it. And it runs across the stretch of a ton of Char maps. 
Uh, in fact, it will define the northern border of the Plains of Ashford, which is the original zone. Uh, and no doubt we'll have various quests and things and adventures we can deal with nearby. There's a hero challenge here as well, where we can fight a Centurion, Titus Gearclaw. He's super defensive and tanky. Uh, luckily, I've got a friend here. Other players, we're in the open world, obviously. We'll constantly find other people. So we can destroy him and get a hero challenge, which we'll eventually be able to spend on new skills and stuff, as you guys remember. We can practice firing cannons uh, and doing all varieties of different things out here. Um, but yeah, I don't want to do too extensive, too long of a run around. Uh, this is probably enough already, actually, to give you a good enough feel. So how about um, we skip this little bit of leveling? Oh, we'll, we'll get one more level, right? We're, we're very close to level three, so we don't want to fall down this. We'll probably die to full damage. In truth, secretly, the first expansion to the game unlocks gliding for my account, so I can, in theory, glide, but like That's I said... you don't put your hand in the devourer's mouth. Okay, next question. Me! Me! I heard you could stop a charging devourer by rearing up on your legs and screaming. Is that true? Oh, you'll definitely get it to stop. It'll stop right on top of you and eat your screaming muzzle right off your face! <laughs> cool. Cool. Uh, so these are char cubs. Uh, char cubs are uh, raised in places called Faraz, and that's where they sort of meet and um, learn to work with their warband, who becomes like their lifelong family. Uh, there's also, there's a, basically, this is a little fun where they rear devourers, uh, which is something w that we saw even in the original game, the char were very familiar with when they were our enemies. They had great siege devourers and so forth. Uh, there's events and things that can proc here. Um, so yes, the uh, first expansion gives gliding, which I could technically do, uh, and if we press H and have a look at the hero panel, I told you guys I'd show you some more of this. So we have equipment, which we showed off before. Now we're in heavy armor, scale stuff, chain armor, chain chaucies. We can get totally different stuff here. We've got a sword. We've got another sword. We'll be able to dual wield swords at level six, which we'll do very soon. You've got the wardrobe, which I showed you, and there's a ton of different skins available. Dying, which I showed you. Outfits, which I showed you. Uh, and down here, you'll notice there's actually glider skins. Do we get to take a baby devourer back to the Farrar with us? And I guess they're talking about that. Uh, but gliding, I will show you later when we actually get to the point of the first expansions. Where I have to sit on that and wait, guys. That's a part of my challenge, okay? And yeah, there's loads of dialogue we can learn about with the, um, the char over there. Looks like behind this waterfall, here's the one thing we'll do. Behind this waterfall, there is a veteran rampaging scale for us to fight. So this guy's level four and we're only level two. This should actually be quite a difficult fight. Let's see what we can do here. He might really hurt us. I don't know, actually. Yeah, okay, so he is doing some damage. We'll have to use our heal skill very carefully here. You'll notice right now that we don't really have anything going on except just two skills. Warrior is probably one of the most basic things you can play to start off with, but it increasingly gets more and more interesting, especially as you start Elite Specialization. Uh, elite Specializing. We'll learn about uh, an entire new mechanic called Adrenaline very soon. So there you have it. We hit level three. We unlock our first bag. We don't need to see all of this again. Let's get into the main campaign and see exactly what's going on with the char. I'll see you guys in a second. Back at Smokestead. All right, so here we are once again. Uh, we are at level 10. We're just outside uh, where we began, really. And we are going to be heading through this portal into the city itself. You notice we got a mail here, so let's have a little bit of a read. It's from Legionnaire Irvin Stillbane again, who says, Urgent, report in immediately. And they say, What happened out there? While you were grandstanding with Ritlock Brimstone, this Tribune, remember, which we barely even spoke to, let's be honest. Uh, the members of our warband that you left behind suffered near total losses. Oh dear, uh-oh. This mess is all your fault. So all those NPCs we were speaking to at the start? Dead. I'm in charge, and I'm taking the steps to replenish our numbers. If you expect to have a future in the Blood Legion, report to me in the Black Citadel immediately. Legionnaire Irvin Stillbane. So this is our Legionnaire. We report to this person. Who, I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, it sounds like made a pretty terrible decision there and got a ton of us killed. And now apparently we're the ones that are uh, at fault, even though we survived. So, yeah, hmm, don't really like that too much. Uh, so let's head on in. Now, as I leveled up there, the game gave me a couple of extra bits of gear. So, not only did we unlock some more skills... Uh, we unlocked our final sword ability. It's called Final Thrust. We strike our foe with a final powerful thrust uh, that does a lot of extra damage against foes who are below 50% health. Okay, so if we use this up against people who are already low, we can really slam them to death. But also, you'll notice on my back here, we got a shield. It's a pretty basic looking shield, but we got a shield. So we are a sword shield warrior, as you can see. 
and I get two shield skills. I get shield bash, bash our uh, foe with a shield and stun them. So we can stun someone and then hit them for free. And we get, of course, shield stunts. We can just block attacks. We can hide behind the shield. And during all of this time, we block attacks, which is good. It's sort of like invulnerability. Not as strong as invulnerability because some things are unblockable, but still. Pretty goddamn good. Now, here's another fun thing. Uh, not only do we have sword and shield, but unlike on Elementalist, who gets attunement swaps, we've unlocked a different mechanic altogether. And I can show you it from the hero panel. We have a sword, we have a shield, the dull blade and the precise iron shield. And if you look here as well, it says swap weapon sets. And under here we have an alternate main hand weapon and an alternate offhand weapon. So I can actually equip a totally different set of weapons here that in combat we can just swap between. And this is one of the main aspects of Guild Wars 2. It was more of a minor mechanic in the original game that you saw a lot of PvPers do for energy management and stuff, but they expanded massively in this game. So how about we equip a hammer, a mighty iron hammer. This is a two-handed hammer. This is a great hammer. It's massive, okay? And so now you'll see at any point I like, I can press a hotkey and I can swap between my sword and my shield and my hammer. And remember that your skills change based on the weapons you have equipped. So here I have this set of five abilities, and when I swap, it's a bit like attunement swapping almost, I get this set of five abilities, which are all totally different. We won't go through all of those. We'll get into some fights before we uh, overload you all with that. But yeah, so that's pretty huge. We get tons of different weapons we're going to use a warrior. We can swap between them. We can do traits that give us all kinds of perks from weapon swapping that reduce the cooldown on weapon swapping. It's uh, it's a pretty major facet of what it means to be a warrior. So pretty good stuff. Right, let's continue our story. The Chain of Command. we got to report in. Here's a tank, an example of some Iron Legion stuff. We get this badass gate opening. Uh, let's see what we got. So this is actually our home instance. At least you made it. I think we're the only ones left. Ah, so Clawspur, you survived. Because we chose him at our biography, this is the only member of our warband that has made it. Sup, dude? He says, I knew you'd made it. You've always been the best of us, but I'll miss him. The others. Dinky, Uriel, Reaver, and Maverick. What happened to us out there? After you went into the crypt, Steelbane split us up. Different objectives. The others were cut down like wheat. I got to higher ground. So you in trouble as well, dude? Uh, what's Steelbane's problem? Why is he taking it out on me? He's always been a jerk. Command made him worse. He blamed the warband for not being the best, but it was his fault. Bad leadership. Mm. Uh, that's what Clawspur thinks as well then. What about Howl? He was our warrior, warrior's warband's lieutenant. Did he die too? Nobody knows. Howl was in the crypt when Baradin collapsed him. You dug out? He didn't. There was no body for Howl? Nothing at all? Not unless that trinket he'd found magically teleported him to the Shiver Peaks. He's rubble. So listen, guys. I really want you to remember this conversation about Howl here. This will become relevant again later, but they really sneak it in very early here. Howl was a member of our warband. We think they've all died, but there was no body from this dude, and apparently had a magic trinket. That will become a bit relevant later, and it might feel a bit weird if you don't remember this bit of the conversation. So, let's try to. Alright, duty calls. Time to go. Let's report in. Well, look who finally came back. When Steelbane gets done with you, you'll wish you died with the rest of your warband. As if I cared what you think. Who are you? And why are you breathing at me? Sorosi Breaksteel. Steelbane recruited me, along with the others, to rebuild the warband. Wait, what? He's recruiting without asking us? Yeah, because you're dead, remember? And probably better off that way. Report to Steelbane in the barracks, quick, or you'll be in for a beating. In for a beating? Well, I don't know how scared I am of that, but all right, let's see what we've got. So we'll move on over. And we can use like these abilities to move a little bit quicker as well when we don't have swiftness. So here we get a very cool looking tank. Look at this. We'll be able to ride and fire and interact with these in all kinds of fun ways as the story goes along, guys. It's going to be really good. And look at these huge ones here as well. Look at these. I wonder what they actually call these vehicles. These we won't see getting driven around and ridden and stuff. Maybe one day in future updates, because the game's still, you know, the story is constantly being added to. Maybe one day we'll see that the devs actually make these drivable, but that would be incredible. They're so cool. Uh, Alright, so what we got over here, it's, um, it looks like a lot of Blood Legion. Legionnaire, looks like some sewage just floated in from the battlefield. 
You get my best soldiers killed, and then have the nerve to stand there stinking up our barracks with your cowardly musk? I got them killed? Tell me something, boss. Who's in charge of this outfit? Who is giving the orders? You. Watch your tongue, soldier, or I'll have it removed for insubordination. Great. Teach this piece of waste how to address a legionnaire. With pleasure. So, let's settle this Blood Legion style, baby. I'm perfectly happy to. Where are you, Rage? If I have to tear you down with my claws and horns, I'll absolutely go for that. So, you'll notice here, Claw Spur fights alongside us. So, this is Claw Spur. He's actually using an elite skill already there, it looked like. He's a thief, um, and he'll fight us. Uh, he'll fight along with us, sorry, uh, as our best bud. He'll do that a lot in this story. So if you thought the human stuff was too easy, you're going to find the char stuff's even easier because a lot of the time, enemies won't even fight us. They'll just fight our ally. It's like we have a permanent summon. It's ridiculous. So down he goes. Suck it, Stillbane. And all we had to do was auto attack. Good stuff. Now a huge group's coming in. All right, so we can block. One of them's got a pistol. A lot of them are on our ally. We can shield bash and stun them. Gaining adrenaline. And so you heard my character there said gaining adrenaline. As we attack people as a warrior, you'll notice I've got this little bar here. It's called adrenaline. And as we take damage, as we deal damage, it increases, increases. And it's sort of like an overdrive meter, like a limit break. It's like a special... It unlocks a super powerful skill that spends our adrenaline to use. So, and this that skill changes based on the weapon you have. We have the, it here. It's called flurry. It's a burst skill. Immobilize your foes with a flurry of bleeding strikes. Another corpse that doesn't know it's dead. I thought only humans were that stupid. So, Sorosi's getting in now. She's a big boss, and we just immediately opened with our adrenaline skill there, which is pretty nice. We're taking some damage here. We'll go again. So watch, we can hit two of them at once here as well with Flurry, okay? And, uh, and as we fight, it constantly recharges. Now, what's really cool, though, is if I swap to my hammer now, this skill changes too. So, the burst skill changes based on what weapon you have equipped. So, where other classes only get, like, five abilities with their weapons, warriors kind of get six. And the chain skills on the autos. So, now that i got my hammer, my burst skill is this. It's called Earthshaker. We slam down and we stun everyone in a massive ring and do big damage on everyone in a massive ring. Hammer's like a really slow, meaty uh, weapon that constantly knocks people around and CCs them. So, really good. Stand down! All of you! Stand down now! So, you fight your own warband better than you fight the enemy. Go on, get out of my sight while I figure out what to do with you. There's a load of supplies over at Telerain's. Bring them to me. Double time! It's the only job you're fit for. Screw this up, and I will use your hide as a doormat. Understood? Understood, boss. Hmm, I don't like him. I don't like him at all. It's okay, because I don't think we're meant to like him. But yeah, so that's a little bit of what the hammer feels like, and we'll see a lot of other good stuff. Clawsburg, what do you think of this? Telerange, then? Stupid Stillbane. We get the drudge work, he gets the glory. We do this by the book. If Stillbane steps out of line, then we act. Not before. Fine. Let me know when you change your mind. Well, I might do eventually. Clawsburg looks so cool, by the way. He looks even cooler than us, maybe. I don't know whether I'm happy with this. They're laughing at us after we fought them. So, we obviously didn't go to the death there, but we did put a lot of them down. Look how badass the Blood Legion look. I cannot wait to get Blood Legion armor. We're going to look just like these guys. At some point in the series, guys, we're going to do it. Look, they're all crippled as they run off. What's the duration on that? One day, three hours, 46 minutes left of cripple on him. That's funny. All right. So, yeah, let's uh, go re re retrieve these supplies. Not particularly interesting, but uh, I guess uh, when you fall into conflict with your warband leadership, that might happen there. Those guys in the guard don't miss much. We don't miss anything. So this is the Adamant Guard. These guys are the sworn protectors of the Black Citadel. You won't find them much far away from here. Welcome home, soldier. You looking to get some rack time? Head on in. Your barracks are waiting. So yeah, this is actually our barracks, right? The Heroes Canton that we were in a second ago. There's some little areas there we might be able to explore a bit later where you can sort of uh, imagine that that's where we go to sleep or whatever in our barracks. That never actually happens in the story, but there you have it. All right, so let's get out. Look at this gate to the Black Citadel. Oh, uh, this is the Ashford Gate, and we'll move on to... Um, 
Telerange. I can't remember how far away Telerange is, by the way. We'll have a look. Oh, so Telerange is actually right near where we were earlier. Okay, so double loading screens. It worked out perfectly. I went, it was totally planned, guys. I totally went to that waypoint specifically because I knew. I totally knew, guys, that this was going to be where it is. So this is the Telerange itself, actually. Very near to where the, the whole game began. So that's good. All right. Let's go get these supplies. I just love the chart. I think they look so good. Supply runs. Steelbane must hate us as much as we hate him. Yeah, it doesn't look very good, does it? Still Blaine can blame us all he wants. He'll just get him dead sooner. It may not come to that. Maybe he'll be more reasonable once he actually calms down, we say. Hmm, well, I hope so. But then again, we are Char. Maybe we relish in killing one another. Especially as Blood Legion. The rest of your warband defected voluntarily. Don't be stubborn. Why fight for blood when you can cook for Flame Legion? Females have it easy with us. You want me to desert and join you so you can demote me to fry cook? Please! I've killed a hundred males twice your size. Fall in line or fall on a blade. I don't care which. No luck trolling for recruits at the pig farm? <laughs> you Flame Legion stiffs must be desperate. I came here for supplies, but this is a lot more fun. If it's fun you want, recruits! Let's send Blood Legion a message. Bury these idiots and destroy those supplies while you're at it. So, we meet the Flame Legion, who we've talked about a little bit already. Uh, so, the Flame Legion are uh, another of the High Legions. They are charged just like us, uh, but they have a fundamental difference in their beliefs about the world. Uh, and that's they believe in the power. Well, first of all, they're, they're sexist bastards. Uh, which you're already seeing a little bit of there. They just think that the women should be back in the kitchen, which is not on for Guild Wars 2. They do not want us to be able to roleplay as that. Uh, but also, uh, what you have to understand is the Char, when they originally breached the wall, and a lot of their actual um, strengths and major moments they had in taking out the humans. Still want me to cook for you? Here, have a steaming hot bowl of death. They were actually utilizing magic gifted to them by other races. They sought external means beyond their own martial capabilities to actually bring down destruction on the humans. Uh, and they sought to find gods. Uh, they looked to find strength outside of themselves. And that worked for them, but it also left the Char to be manipulated. And over the past 250 years, most Char hate that idea now. They don't particularly care for magic, and they certainly don't care for gods. If you remember that original cutscene we saw in the last video, they had a moment where they said, We killed our gods. Males, maybe your females will take over again. They don't mean literally they killed gods. They mean spiritually. They mean... Um, logically, they have no, they do not care for that anymore. They believe in their own strength. The Char need no gods. And so that's generally what they believe. But the Flame Legion are still sort of stuck in the old ways. And they're more magically inclined. And for this, they've sort of fallen out of favor. Uh, they ruled over the Legions for a long time until a civil war uh, escalated. Uh, where they finally lost control and funnily enough it's because they were defeated at the hands and gate well. of a great many women you have my attention okay so here's a, a, a powerful flame legion recruit a prather so uh, yeah a great hero uh, a, a ferocious female char named Carla Scorchraiser sort of uh, helped the females who had been subjugated and subdued for many years to rise up and together they over overthrew the flame legion so now they don't really have as power as much power as the united strength of blood ash and iron together so now they're sort of more on the fringes of society but a threat and something we should be concerned with bullies and that's what we see a little bit of here so this guy cc's us a lot let's jump straight back in let's use our burst and you'll notice this guy's got a ton of buffs protection swiftness fury and down he goes you flame legion dogs I knew this soldier. Best quartermaster in the legions. Whatever you needed, he had it. Damn, Laris. I'm sorry to hear that. My whole war band deserted for the promise of power. Never thought I'd see something like that. I have nothing left but my life. If you'll have me in your ranks, it's yours. We need soldiers, and you can clearly handle yourself in a scrap. 
Welcome to the Warband. Just be warned, my Legionnaire is going to drown us for losing those supplies. I hope you can swim. Don't worry. I can hold my breath for a long time. I'll take punishment over death, or being a gladium. Lead on. So yeah, she lost her whole warband. Fairly convenient. We just did two. We've got to rebuild our warband, and uh, we're going to recruit her in. A lot of the early Char story is rebuilding our team up, so that's kind of nice. She'll start fighting with us as well. Uh, you'll notice there she says she would hate to be a gladium. Remember, that's a Char without a warband. That's what our father is, who we have no respect for. So we get a choice of some gloves. That's pretty nice. I'll take the chainmail gauntlets. We can equip those. We don't have any of those just yet. So get extra defense and power. It has a heavy armor character. The armor we get is worth more than for the light armor characters. So we get innately tankier. Alexis uh, speaks to us too. She says, I owe you one, but you should know that I've done the same for you. Uh, no hesitation. All right, fair enough. These are the only the first flame legion we'll be killing together. Hope you're ready. I'm ready than I've ever been, she says. Point me at a thing and it dies, or I do. Wow, she's pretty vicious. Uh, what can I answer for you, sir? Uh, why did your warband turn traitor like that? Well, we lost half of our number in the attack on Smokestead. Wow. Uh, afterwards, there was a lot of resentment against the Tribunes. I think they just lost their spirit. Damn. You said you'd uh, have been a Gladium without my help? And she says, yeah, it's true. No warband out on my own until another warband took me in or I died. This is a much better deal. Right, you need a warband and we need more members. Everybody wins. So yeah, pretty uh, basic little mission, actually. We, we messed up our objective of getting the supplies, but we found a new ally. Great. The only thing worse than Steelbane... The Flame Legion. What are the Flame Legion doing here, Clausper? Well, they're treacherous zealots. They probably snuck in this close to the Citadel. They're looking for soldiers and they're looking for slaves. Good thing we uh, got here and helped Alexis then. Too many knives can make a mess of a simple job. Oh, <laughs> too many cooks spoil the broth, guys. Why did he say Alexis couldn't fight if she joined the Flame Legion? Because the Flame Legion are idiots. They keep their females in the pantry. Stupidest thing I ever heard. And that indeed was their downfall. Uh, they didn't tap into their entire population of strength and might. Uh, do you think that Stillbane knew the Flame Legion would be here? If he did, that would make this a setup. What's your back? Wow, if that if he set us up, it's a little bit like what was happening with the humans, right? All right, so there you go. We're going to go report back in the Black Citadel uh, of this little adventure here. Turns out interesting things can happen, even though you're just sent off to, as a punishment to do something really boring. And uh, so when we report to Steelbane this time, uh, our home instance is on the right. We're actually going to go up to the Imperator's core here. So this is the heart of the Black Citadel. Um, and this place is uh, really quite interesting. So the, uh, the Iron Legion sort of rule from here, right? And right at the top of the chain of command for the Iron Legion is someone with the title Imperator. The Imperator of the High Legion is in this core. His name is uh, Smoda the Unflinching. And he's a bit of a badass, kind of a unique thinker. And uh, the actually, the arrows are not taking us in there. Maybe we don't go in there right now? I think we do, don't we? We go quite high. We'll see where the game leads us. I'm watching the mini-map right now. This is a beautiful map. I really like this city. It's one of my favorite cities compared to all the others. Let's take the elevator to the Bane. Oh, yeah, we're going under the core, right? So, actually, underneath, there's this giant arena down here. Uh, this is my favorite place. It's so good, but a lot of players don't come here. Because it's kind of like cluttered and difficult to find all the services and stuff. It's not very logically laid out. But I mean, you can see players. Here's a guy called Quantaz. Here's another guy. Skilled as Harris. <laughs> so, uh, let's continue our story. Down at the arena. Give Steel being the bad news. I'll watch your back. Alright, I hope you will, Clawsper. My advice, take Steelbane out. Quick. Before his recruits know what you're doing. So we can hear the, the roar of the crowds. There's a lot of spectators looking into the arena here. Oh, look, and Ritlock's here. So remember, Ritlock is not as high as an Imperator, okay? He's a Tribune. but And he's he's not Iron Legion, he's Blood. But he's still a very high-ranking ra character here. So he outranks Legionnaire Irvin Stillbane, who's a dick. And Stillbane outranks us, okay? So hello, Ritlock. Do you have anything to say to us? Ask a little low runt since the crypt. He says, I recognize you. Tyrix Ripjaw from the Baradin scuffle, right? Yeah, that was a hell of a fight you gave out there. Shame about your warband's losses. Uh, my soldiers didn't die from the lack of fight, sire. They died from a lack of command. Whoa, we can shit, we can shit talk him right in front of his face. That's great. Watch it, soldier. I appreciate your honesty, but not in subordination. At least, not in half measures. If you're going to do something, take it all the way. This is the bane, after all. 
The Bane, sir? What do you mean? The Bane is an arena. We use it for entertainment, training, and to settle disputes. A good fight can turn two soldiers from enemies into friends. Glad to know, sir. Thanks for explaining. All right, Irvine. Well, well. If it isn't the brave soldier that aided me in Baradin's crypt. Good to see you again, Tribune Brimstone. If you'll excuse me, I need to speak to Steelbane. Reporting in, Legionnaire. Telerange was compromised, crawling with Flame Legion. The supplies were destroyed. In other words, you failed. Again. By the claw of the Conner. Give me one reason why I shouldn't just kill you now. Go ahead and try it. You don't have the spine. You're done, Steelbane. Either you step down as Legionnaire, or I'll knock you into the dirt myself. You want my job, you miserable little puke? Earn it! Get down there and fight. Show me what you've got, and maybe I'll show you how a real Legionnaire fights. Hell yeah, I'm game for this. Turn around, troops. Watch me crush this little mutiny and teach you all a lesson in respect. So it might seem a little silly that we're just resolving every dispute through combat. To the arena. But that's Blood Legion. That's what it's all about. And that's what I love about Blood Legion. So uh, yeah, we're going to go down into the Bane and of course we're going to settle this through bloodshed. Brilliant stuff. By the way, you heard a mention of the Chloral, the Khan Air a second ago. The Khan Air is a theoretical leader of the Char who genuinely can unite all the High Legions. But such a character, no one knows of who could really be the, the Khan Air themselves. And it's unlikely we'll ever see one really be a thing. Uh, but okay, so the Bane Gladiators? Fine, let's do it. Let's go. I'll kill all these Gladiators. Probably a good time to get our hammer out. Because hammer's got great AoE damage. And you'll notice these guys are actually hitting us. Oh my god, it feels like a real game for a second. So we'll just smack these guys around. We can knock them back here if you watch with the skill 4. Uh, we're actually knocking them onto the ground here. Yeah! Feels really meaty. Not bad, soldier. But it's not over yet. Let's see how you fare against the arena champion. Alright, let's take on the champion. Let's do it. Okay, so it's champion Vita Vital Gore. Alright, we can pick up weapons from the ground as well. Here's a metal bar. Which we can smash over his head. Boom. And we get a really long interrupt. Then with a hammer, we can knock him down at the end of it. Then when he stands up, we can knock him away. And we're building adrenaline as we go. And now we can earth shake. So, and now we can go to our shield. Oh, he managed to get us. Uh, we can shield bash him. We can just keep him incapacitated for so long. So here we go. We'll build more adrenaline. We use our burst and stack tons of bleeding. He's super wounded here, and as he gets really low, we can finish him off with a final thrust. Whoppa! So there you go. We actually it didn't even hit that hard. If you critical hit on a final thrust, it's crazy. This is it, soldier. Last round. Victory or death. Let's see what you've got. Victory or death. And out of this gate, we see a giant devourer. So remember I mentioned earlier they're good at, like, dealing with devourers. This guy will see us with these giant rocks, and they do tons of damage. So we want to get in, and we want to make sure we don't get hit with them. Um, I think he can't hit us while we're, we're in his face, so that's good. But he can knock us away and then throw another boulder at us. Oh, God, dodge. Okay, he just about missed it, so that's fine. All right, let's get in there and uh, attack him. So by the way, Ritlock there cried victory or death. Uh, the original game was like a heavily competitive PvP oriented game and one of the most prestigious aspects of it was uh, Guild versus Guild. Guild versus Guild had a mechanic that was called Victory or Death. It was like the tiebreaker mechanic. So a ton of people in Guild Wars, Victory or Death is like this thing people know is like, you know, the intense moment at the end. So there's all kinds of references to Victory and Death. In fact, the very end of this story, the moment that we fight the Elder Dragon at the very end, that will actually be called, the story step will be called, like our current one's called Time for Promotion. The final one will be called Victory or Death. This is an adventure to get to Victory or Death. Oh, we take him out. That felt really good. So yeah, just uh, more random trivia I could just sort of throw at you as we <laughs> play through. Come on, I've thrown, I've taken out everyone you've thrown at me. We've got some gladiator stuff going on here. You can't stop this, man. I'm too strong for you. Outstanding. I'd say the soldier exceeded expectations. What do you say, Steelbane? Uh, he's so impressed, he's speechless. 
<laughs> now get in that ring and fight, Steelbane, or I'll split you open myself. Roar. Yes, sir. Tribune. I can't hear you, Legionnaire. Yes, sir. All right, do not mess with Retlock, man. A formal challenge, Steelbane. This soldier's willing to fight to the death. How about you? Prepare to be impressed, Tribune. I am going to make an example out of this whimpering cub. Do it. Let's go, baby. I'm ready to see you make an example of me. He can't be worse than a giant devourer, right? Nothing's threatened us so far. Oh, he got the knockdown before us. That's really annoying. All right, fine. You got a hammer? I got a hammer. We can play with hammers. It's a noise. If the boss goes down, we lose everything. Oh, that's great. Look, they're cheering for us. Oh, no, no. They're cheering for the for Irvin, actually. They're cheering for Irvin. Irvin is actually hurting us. Here we go. Let's cast our uh, mending here and try and heal ourselves up. We just got to get... We got to get this full frenzy off. There we go. So that we can bleed the hell out of him. No, he's going to let you down. He's a wimp. He's a coward and he got our entire warband killed. Boom. Stop. I surrender. Don't kill me. I can still be of use to the Blood Legion. He's done, soldier. Either he lives to continue serving the Corps as best he can, or he dies in the name of Legion discipline. Either way, the decision's yours. Kill him, or cast him out of your warband. So, we get a pretty cool choice here. Don't do it, he says. I beg you, let me live. I may have been harsh. But I was trying to do what was best for the warband by splitting us up and punishing me. What was best for the for Steelbane, you mean? You started this, I'm finishing it, die. Or you make me sick, you nauseating little whiner. Crawl away and take your shame with you. So what do we do, guys? Do we leave him alive? Um, he bows before us. Look at this, look at this. What do we want to do? I like watching you squirm. I think I'll ponder this a little longer. Stay right there. Well, of course, we, Tyrix Ripjaw, we don't mess around. Die. And so, when you choose to kill him, we actually have to fight him again. Now he's fighting for his life. He gets a little bit more health. He has fury, so he'll critically hit us a bit more, so he's more dangerous to us. Oh, I was going to dodge that. I was so close to dodging that. Let's just knock him away. Let's get weakness on him so he can't really hurt us too much. Back to the sword. We'll shield block whatever he does next so that we don't get hit by it. Okay, that's fine. We'll dodge that, I guess. I'm trying to, like, not get hit by his big knockbacks and stuff. I just don't know when they're coming, though. He's going to do it in the middle of our frenzy here, isn't he? There it is. Oh, it's okay. He's dying. He's bleeding to death. Let's use Backbreaker on him. Boom. And down he goes. Even the most glorious revolution is just a successful mutiny, huh? Congratulations on your promotion, Legionnaire. Thank you, Tribune. I'll rebuild this warband and live up to your trust. I promise you that. Good. Now for your first orders. Replenish your warband with honorable Gladium. Earn their trust. Yes, sir. Any recommendations? Fie on the Wraith and Sour Doomsday. Both are good soldiers who've fallen on hard times. I'll give you a full briefing when you're ready. Right, so we get to choose from two more people to join. Sit down. We are in charge now. So what do you guys think? Want to start something? Yeah, I want to start something. You're going to toe the line? Clawspur. Legionnaire? Good, he says. And Rage? What about him? Rage and Sarosi won't follow you. The others are even less reasonable. That's okay but I'm with me, though. We don't need him. God, their armor looks so good. So Rage isn't going to come? Sentinel reporting. He says, uh, Legionnaire Stilbane was a visionary. You're not fit to lick his boots. I'll have my revenge. You'll see. And I can say, get out of here before I change my mind and gut you. Sarosi? Damn you. You and your whole spit tooth warband. You'll never get anywhere with that bunch of dredge heads. We're going to be the most famous warband in the Legion someday. Watch and see, tail sniffer. And look, they're actually turning their backs on us and they're walking off. Get out of here like we care. We have a Tribune Ritlock Brimstone holding us. So, I'd rather that. So, very well, Legionnaire. You've got two solid choices. Sour Doomsday or Fion the Wraith. Thoughts? Well, tell me about Fion. Fion's warband spent decades in Ascalon hunting ghosts until they were caught in an ambush and only Fion survived. He's a hardened veteran. He's good with blades. He's more stealthy than you'd expect from Blood Legion. A little old, perhaps, but he's still kicking. 
Hmm, okay. What about Sour? Sour's a talented necromancer. He was training for covert ops until his warband found him meeting with the flame shamans. They accused him of treason. I suspect he was just over eager. So a mistrusted trusted Gladium needs a home and my warband needs talent. So who do we want to go with? Fion or Sour? I think the more interesting one is probably to go with uh, Fion. So we're going to run with Fion here. Another sort of selfie-ish guy. Actually, the, the person to compliment our team probably is probably a necromancer, right? So we've got a stealthy guy. We've got us and then the necromancer. So let's do that. He was mistrusted. Not just mistrusted, but mistreated. And he's fed up. The Flame Legion's been using that anger to try and turn him to their side. You'll find him by the Victory Cenotaph. All right. Okay. I'm ready to choose. Let's go with Fion the Wraith. Worst officer ever. Won't miss him. I say rename the warband and move on. All right, Clawspur. I love this, by the way, guys. What you don't realize is, again, a character creation, he's just one of, like, six different characters we could have picked that would be with us right now. They all have different unique dialogue. The char stuff's, like, really layered in that way. So, we get a reward here and a, a really cool choice of weapons. So, we already have a shield, and we've seen that. But we could pick up a warhorn, or we could take a great sword. So this is a two-handed, massive weapon that does crazy damage. So I really want to show you uh, Greatsword next. And also, with that, you'll notice we've leveled up, and we've got two bars of adrenaline. So our burst stuff, we can charge even harder now and hit way harder. And we get a utility skill, and the story has just started to spice up a little bit. So it should be very good. You've got a long way to go, Legionnaire, and you can start by whipping this warband into shape. I need this unit ready to deploy, deploy as soon as possible. Here is as much a weapon as your blade. And that sounds pretty good to me. So I will see you guys in the next part where we continue to build up our strength and see just exactly what the Char have got to do with the, the, the broader narrative. Thanks, guys. I'll see you next time. Let me tell you a little something about humans. They love their magic and they believe in gods. How come we don't kill them all then? They're our enemy, and never forget that. But we have a greater enemy now. I know, I know, the dragons. That's right. The awakening of the dragons has shifted the balance of power across the land. We have a new, more pressing enemy now. I think we should feed the humans to the dragons, then kill the dragon. Don't be stupid. The dragons won't eat icky humans. They just throw them at us. Some believe as you do. Tribune Bright Eye doesn't want a truce with the humans. Others, such as Tribune Kindleshot, disagree. There's a lot of argument about this. Humans are scrawny. All the great heroes fought them, but they're not a threat anymore. And they divide our army from the world. 